Hello, I've been keeping a secret. I have been making thousands of dollars on the side, and I've been so secretive because I didn't really want to share my formula, but now today I finally decided to share my process. So this will be a three-part series, but today I'll just cover sourcing and how I find the furniture that I sell. So the first step is what to buy. So maybe you want to get started, but you're just overwhelmed by all the choices. So first of all, you have to figure out what kind of furniture flipper you are. So there are those who will buy a piece of furniture and then cover it in paint and give it a complete makeover and sell it as something different than what it was. And then there are people like me who find pieces that maybe need just a light restoration so that you can bring it back to life. It's way less time and money and it lets the history of the piece shine through again. Next, you need to educate yourself on maybe what is trending. So if you aren't in the design world, maybe you can follow a few people on Instagram to kind of see what is new, what's fresh, and what people are using to decorate with. So a few designers that I love to follow on Instagram are Chris Loves Julia, Jean Stouffer, and Amber Lewis. They have just incredible interiors, always bringing in different types of pieces, and I love to see how they use them. So it's important for you to know what is in style, so that way you know what will be the best seller for you. For example, Mid-Century Modern has been resurfacing in and out of style since the 90s, and I think it'll continue on, so if you find something like that, that'll be a nice piece to sell. Um, there's also different trends of more organic um, decorating and just natural looking things. So sometimes people just refinish wood pieces and then maybe just put a wax on it so it's a natural look. And then also transitional is huge right now. It combines several different styles all in one. So maybe you have traditional or modern and maybe even like a British or English designed inspired piece. Like those all come together in a transitional style. People are creating more collected looks, which is awesome because antiques are now coming back in and people are valuing them again. So not all pieces of furniture sell as well as others. Um, so dining room tables are somewhat hard for people to flip because of the storage. Um, so if I get a dining room table, I just probably won't park in the garage that week. Um, but it tends to be a really good seller for me because the amount of work that's put into it besides picking up and then reselling um, is very minimal. Sometimes I'll even offer to deliver it to my buyer for a fee, which is great because I can make even more profit on that piece. Other things like coffee tables, end tables, entryway tables, TV stands, shelves, um, those kinds of things also, if you find them, might need just a little bit of touching up, cleaning, and then you can stage them and sell them again. And they're very easy, quick sellers. So there's also a trend of like flipping chairs where you can like find an old chair and take the skirt off and that kind of thing. I kind of started doing that, but I really am not comfortable because you never know if there are bed bugs or fleas, things like that. Um, so anything kind of upholstered, unless you know where it's coming from, I'd be really careful with that. I do love flipping chairs though. They seem to be really great sellers, especially ones that have like rattan on them or like the woven seats. So I've learned to repair the rattan if it comes undone, which seems to be something that a lot of people don't know how to do, which is super simple. And then also the woven seats are made of like a raffia and I've also learned how to repair those. Um, so those are really awesome sellers and very on trend. And then don't forget about smaller pieces too, like maybe lamps, um, original artwork. I love looking for paintings. I collect them as well as sell them. Um, mirrors are great. And then also small items like mid-century modern sculptures or bookends or things like that. Those are great too because you can mail them out because they're smaller and then your um, seller market is a lot larger then. Usually the best pieces that I sell are ones that I've wanted to keep. Just ask my husband. Um, it's usually hard for me to let some things go. Um, but you know if you love it and you would like it in your home, someone else would as well. Also, on the other hand, if something is a little bit sketchy um, and you're just not quite sure about it, leave it because nothing is worse than getting stuck with furniture that won't sell. Next, you need to determine, is it worth your time? There are three things that determine a good profit margin. Um, first, you have the cost of the product and then how much it'll take to fix and then how many hours you have in it because nobody wants to work for free. So then when I find a piece that I think will be great, I mean, sometimes if I'm not familiar with it, I'll do a quick search online to kind of see what it's going for. Definitely always make sure and look for the price that it's sold for, not the price that it's listed for. And then maybe you'll know I could sell it at this price. So if I have this mount into it, this is the profit I will have. So another consideration is storage space. Do you have the room to store this piece before it sells? Um, I don't have a ton of storage, so I try really hard to get that piece out the door before I bring anything else in. I really hope you're enjoying this. Feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you'd like to continue to see more. All right, are you ready for all my secrets on where I find all my good furniture pieces? So the first place that I frequent daily is Facebook Marketplace. And the key to this is you have to look every single day, maybe sometimes a couple times a day. A lot of people are very familiar with Facebook Marketplace, uh, but there are some tricks to getting the most out of it. 
So when you're doing your search, it's a good rule of thumb to search um, with an adjective plus a noun. So maybe you wanna search for a table or a chair, um, but in front of that, put an adjective like old, retro, rattan, mid-century modern, um, and then that'll help you pick the things that you'll really love and that will sell well for you. Um, it also then helps your algorithm learn what you like. And I love that because it kind of collects all the things that I've looked at in the past, puts them together in one little grouping, and then you just have to quickly browse and see what's new in your area. So communication is absolutely important. Um, first of all, don't hesitate if you see a piece that you love, message the seller right away, and don't pester them with lots of measurement questions and things like that because they'll maybe just get annoyed and move on to the next person. So another super important thing I feel is to be very polite, be very kind, um, don't use automated responses, they'll think maybe you're a scammer. So a lot of times, me included, sellers will put up products for about 20% more than what they're worth, knowing that people will bargain with them. So when you go to pick up the furniture, of course, use common sense and stay safe. Um, I try really hard to jump on it and not let the seller have to hold it for very long. Sometimes I'll even offer to give them Venmo or PayPal um, just to hold it. If you get there and it's not what you thought it was gonna be, don't feel pressured. So the number one rule is to be consistent. Um, also be patient. Sometimes maybe look outside your search and be willing to drive a little bit further for something. Um, there was one time I got a set of um, bookcases. They were like rattan with glass shelving. I drove about an hour and a half and paid $40 for both and ended up selling them for 800. So the hunt is actually really fun, uh, but make sure it's always worth your time. All right, so thrift shops, those are great. Um, you do have to have the time to actually leave your house, go look and see what you can find, and sometimes you come home empty-handed. So some of my favorites are Goodwill, Restore, Salvation Army. Um, the key is to be there frequently. Um, there's a little trick. If you know that area will be having a yard sale um, for the whole neighborhood, make sure and check like that following Monday and Tuesday because people will then take the things that they didn't sell, put them in the Goodwills locally, and then they'll put them out on the sales floor a couple days after. Also, January is a major clean out. People are trying to declutter. And so just know what you're gonna look for. Maybe have a list on your phone and you can check it off because when you get there, sometimes you forget because there's just so much to look at. So there is something you have to watch at thrift shops. They sometimes overprice their items. So I'm always checking it online to make sure it's a good price. Flea markets are great because there is so much stuff in one place. We have a great flea market locally and I try to go there several times a year in the summertime. So then there are estate sales, garage sales, church flea markets, and this is where you can get really amazing deals because people just want to get rid of stuff. Um, estate sales and garage sales, I sometimes use Facebook to look up online to see where they're at. I also use yardsales.net, garagesale.com. Um, you can see what is in your area. Um, I love there too, they have photos, so maybe it'll save you a trip and you look and you see this just like clothes or something and there's no furniture. Church flea markets are amazing. You can get things for like a dollar, sometimes even a quarter, it's ridiculous. Another great place to find things is on the side of the road. So we have like a town cleanup day and we will put all our things out. Being that it's free, as long as it's like worth 50 bucks, I feel like it's worth my time. And then there's the whole other world of selling new merchandise. Um, you can find furniture through online auctions, pallets that might have been returned. Well, I actually have a side hustle working for a company um, that reviews products from Amazon. So I have gotten lots of brand new, really nice furniture pieces. All they needed me to do is put it together, show how it's used, um, take a five minute video, and then I get to keep that piece plus what they pay me. And then I know there's other apps that you can use as well. Um, Nextdoor, OfferUp, five miles, there's lots of them um, that you can find and try to scour and see if you can find pieces. All right, so there is my complete list of all the places that I like to find furniture. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. I'm so excited for the next two videos in this series. Next one will be on how I restore my pieces and all the tips and tricks that I have there. And then the last one will be on how I sell it using the best keywords, photos, that kind of thing to give me the most money. So I hope to see you over there and I'll see you next time. Bye.